Hello and welcome back so let's begin. Narrator POV Izuku was getting ready to leave Yue when Ochako walked up to him wrapping him into a hug that caused him to smile softly as he returned it. Izuku was about to head out and check a location that Ayama said might hold AFO and Shigaraki. Izuku could finally end it here and now, thus he was getting ready to leave to finish this chaos. They have lost too much and he wasn't going to lose any more. He had already said goodbye to Irian and Ko already so Ochako would be his last. Ochako. Good luck babe. We'll hold the fort while you're gone. And this madness for us dot 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 for everyone. Izuku, I will. Ochako, I. I got something to tell you once you come back with that win. But first let's get married once all this mess is cleaned up. Izuku, I wouldn't have it any other way. Izuku gave her one last peck before flying off towards the location with Ochako waving him off. Lightning lit the dark sky illuminating Izuku's face that was just terrified shock as he collapsed to his knees in front of Ochako who was in a pool of blood with a knife in her chest. Izuku brought Ochako to his chest as tears filled his eyes as he looked up and saw all the bodies of the remaining survivors. The remaining buildings were up in flames and Izuku saw some of the heroes helping the villains loot and do other actions. Izuku felt something inside him snap as he slowly stood up while gently laying Ochako's body down. One of the villains noticed him alerting the rest as they slowly surrounded Izuku whose eyes were shadowed by his hair. A young adult with messy blonde hair skipped towards Izuku from the crowd before stopping a few feet away from him with a crazed smile as she was completely covered in blood. Toga, Izuku you won. I also see that you found Ochako and saw the love I gave her. Oh, her last words were your name. How romantic even in death she still thought about you her blood was delicious too but had a weird taste though I have had it before so I was able to recognize it. Did you know there was a little Izuku growing inside her? Izuku's eyes widened as he finally snapped killing Toga with a flick of a finger that burst her head apart. Izuku doesn't remember much after that just flashes of people running from him in fear, begging for mercy that never came, the sounds of bones breaking and blood splashing. Once he came to he was covered in blood that wasn't his own and then he buried all of his close ones and the innocent. Izuku opened his eyes and was greeted by the blue ocean as he continued to fly towards the remote location of Sumerai's. He always hated that nightmare because it reminded him of his failure and the sick joke the world played on him. He won he beat the two people that destroyed his world and yet he had no one to celebrate with. He won for no reason. He missed them all so much but he needed to finish this mission first then he would rest. Izuku saw the fortress below and quickly dived into the entrance on the side of the mountain causing it the whole mountain to shake from the landing as well. Izuku quickly tore through the ranks of powerless henchmen bloodening the halls as he made his way to the throne room. Two crazy twins tried to stop him but they didn't last long as they were soon without head. A monstrosity got in his way but a simple flick made its entire torso turn into red mist. The archer tried to stop him but he just snapped her neck. Izuku kicked the door of the throne room down as he walked in and saw Fleck reading his doomsday book. He turned to Izuku with a glare that quickly disappeared into fear as he watched Izuku stare at him with an empty look with his entire body covered with blood. You could barely see the green of the hoodie underneath all the blood. Izuku took one step forward causing Fleck to take a step back on instinct in anger he activated the lasers in the room to attack Izuku. Izuku flickered for barely a second as if you blinked and all the turrets were instantly destroyed. Izuku started to walk towards Fleck making him back up in fear. He ignored his fear and tried to attack Izuku. A fist imprinted into his chest before he got launched into a wall making a giant crater. Fleck now in his white form was all broken and bruised as one punch had overworked his quirk in an instant. Fleck fell from the wall onto the floor as he tried to crawl away until Izuku stepped on his broken leg making him stay put and to scream in pain. He didn't even get a chance to beg for mercy as Izuku brought his other foot straight down on Fleck's head killing him. Izuku lifted his foot out of the corpse and realized a shaky breathe as he realized he let his anger control him again. Fleck probably didn't have to die but his fate never really mattered in the grand scheme of things. This was something he didn't feel like leaving to chance in the future so he decided to take care of it now. Izuku walked out of the fortress and slowly floated up into the sky until he was a good few kilometers above the fortress. He took a deep breath as he let OFA course through his body as he quickly reached his 100%. The sky started reacting violently from the power Izuku was releasing as it darkened with thunder. He then let Fajin mix in with its max causing his cyanish glow slowly mix with a yellow causing him to glow full green now as he made his hand flat. Izuku, full cowling 100% plus Fajin max. Divine chop. Izuku chopped down causing the mountain to cut clean in half and everything behind it as well for miles before the misplaced rocks started to cave in on each other destroying the facility completely. Izuku sighed as he let OFA die down and started to fly back to Japan. At the speed he was going he should be back the day before they leave for the summer camp. Hopefully it won't be that different. Narrator POV Izuku was tailing a school bus in his dirty green hoodie, today was the day they would go to the summer camp. Izuku wasn't going to be too active during the initial part but would step in if he deems that it has changed too much. One thing though is that he won't let Ragdoll lose her quirk, he just didn't see a need for it to be lost. But one thing was certain it was close to the curtain call, it was time for the final act. 
Izuku saw the bus door open letting Class 1 Afri to stretch their legs out of the bus Camry which made Izuku tighten his fist anger until he let it go since he knew this was a risk. He saw Kota watch the class with a large smile with it looking like he was excited to see the future heroes making Izuku gain a sad smile. Kota went to go talk to Ri, but she ignored him with a look of boredom but Kota took it as shyness as he established himself as her friend making Izuku chuckle at Ari's face of discomfort. Izuku watched Class 1 get launched into the forest which caused him to chuckle lightly from the memory. He was far up in the sky to the point he probably barely looked like a speck so he wasn't too worried about being caught. Izuku went through the options of what could happen and made simple plans for each one. For example, if the League of Villains didn't even show up to the summer camp Izuku will go straight to the final base and kill them all. However, he doesn't want it to happen like that. He wants a student to get captured and for All Might to fight AFO then Izuku would step in. The people of Japan needed to see their symbol of peace fall or it will be impossible for the heroes of the future to establish their legacy and make the people feel safe. Izuku would try his best to make sure no one of importance will die but he is willing to make sacrifices because who knows what the League would do with a captive while backed into a corner. Izuku sighed as he watched Class 1 escape the forest. Hopefully he won't have to make a sacrifice. The training camp was mostly the same with very few differences from Izuku's own timeline. One change was the water hoses being there as trainers making Izuku happy. The main difference Izuku noticed was that his past self is way stronger than he was at the time probably 30% maybe a max 35% however still no sign of the other user's quirks so that's good. He noticed that this Izuku or Deku which is what he's going to call him from now on is way closer to his Yuraka than he was. Hell they could be mistaken for dating dot 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 he envied this Deku. Tonight should be the attack on the camp in time for some action. He was feeling bored. Izuku was watching Kota and replay on the mountain from the sky when he saw a figure in hood start to approach the children. Kota instantly went in front of Iri to protect her when the hooded man took his hood off revealing Spinner. It seems Spinner was sent to kidnap Iri probably to resume the experiments and Izuku noticed that Spinner was wearing a mix between his and Stain's costume which disgusted him. Izuku appeared next to Spinner and backhanded him into the mountainside killing him instantly. Izuku turned to the two children and motioned for them to hop on his back. Iri did without hesitation while Kota reluctantly did. After securing them Izuku took off noticing the blue flames of the forest and the pink mist had started to form around the forest. Izuku dropped off the kids near the cabins and bolted towards the corner of the camp. As he arrived he saw Magni and Namu standing over the unconscious body of Ragdoll. The Namu picked her up and was about to walk away when Izuku arrived shoulder checking Magni through several trees until he couldn't be seen anymore. Izuku then uppercutted the Namu turning its upper body into red mist dropping Ragdoll who got caught by Izuku before she fell to the ground. Izuku then took off towards the main camp with Ragdoll. As he arrived he saw that Aizawa had just taken care of the Dabai clone and that several 1 and 1B students were exiting the forest with escorts from the wild pussycats and water hoses. Izuku, from the students that are here, I determined that Mustard, Moonfish, Chainsaw Namu, Dabai, Toga, Twice, Compress and Kirijiri are the only villains left. Izuku hovered down alerting the survivors and heroes of his presence. They quickly went to defensive positions around the students their faces filled with panic as they saw the unconscious ragdoll in his hands. Izuku however didn't even say anything as he laid her down and was about to take off when Aizawa wrapped his capture scarf around Izuku making him turn towards Aizawa with a you serious look. Aizawa, I can't let you go. You have caused far too much destruction with your rampage. Tell me why did you do it? Izuku looked at Aizawa with a dead glare releasing more and more killing intent causing the students to buckle from the pressure and fear while the heroes instinctively stepped back in fear. Izuku, I did it because it was necessary. One day you will thank me but I'm not done yet. Aizawa, what about the other pillars? What did you do to them? Izuku let Black Whip loose tearing the scarf apart as Izuku started to float getting ready to handle some more problem. Izuku, there was no other pillars. Izuku then took off towards the pink mist landing next to Mustard making him panic and miss the shot he had on Kendo. Izuku then grabbed Mustard by the neck and snapping it killing him instantly. Before Kendo and Tetsu could confront Izuku, Dark Shadow started his rampage in the middle of the forest letting Izuku slip into the skies. Izuku let the rest of the event take place naturally with him just watching intently ready to step in if he needed to. Letting Moonfish get knocked out by Dark Shadow. Yuraka handing Toga a fat L, Yeyurazu surviving against the Namu and putting the tracker on, compressed kidnapping Takoyami and Bakugo with Deku and company trying to get them back. Something different happened Deku was easily able to catch up to Mr. Compressed tackling him midair causing the two marbles to roll out on the floor in front of the Vanguard action squad. Deku was easily able to grab one of the marbles and was about to grab the other until a thrown knife forced him to pull his hand back. Toga rushed Deku with a crazed smile saying that she was going to cut him but Deku air flicked her back with his finger and reached for the marble again but Dabai got it first opening it revealing Bakugo. The portal opened with Dabai trying to back Hugo into it this time Deku could easily catch up and take back Hugo back but as he was about to jump a black tendril erupted from the ground holding his ankle down. Just like that back Hugo was taken. 
Izuku looked from behind a tree retracting the tendril whispering to himself that it was the endgame now. To him this was possibly the best scenario that could have happened. Narrator POV Today was the day of the raid with Izuku on a rooftop of a building in Kamino Ward right in front of the last Namu factory and the place where AFO was hiding. Izuku wasn't too worried about Bakugo's rescue since he had faith in All Might and the others plus Shigaraki wasn't much of a threat right now. The real wildcard was this bastard who knows what he'll do when he's backed up into a corner. He would intervene when Shigi and his thugs are brought here. Kill them while AFO was fighting All Might, once he was down with Handjob he will step in and finish that ugly bastard once and for all. Izuku heard a loud boom in the distance and knew the raid had started and sure enough Mount Lady appeared in front of him kicking the warehouse in half. Izuku used Black Whip to grab a piece of rebar from the debris and got ready for the main event. The raid went exactly the same with AFO appearing knocking out the second squad with ease, summoning Shigaraki with his goons and Bakugo with the Black Goo Quirk and then finally starting the battle with All Might as he rocketed into the walking corpse. As Izuku saw the remaining League members slowly surround Bakugo he decided now was the perfect time. Izuku picked up the rebar and threw it like a javelin at the group piercing twice straight through the head killing him instantly and shocking the Lee. Bakugo. The public that was watching through the news, the rescue Bakugo squad, All Might and AFO just raised his eyebrow in interest. A blur of green rocketed at Kurajiri showing Izuku who gave his metal brace a dropkick landing on him shattering the brace and surrounding ground. Izuku stepped off the corpse as it started to spaz out due to the broken collar with the shadows that made up Kurajiri to start going haywire. Izuku grabbed the spasming shadows and tossed it to Magni who instinctively caught it. As soon as it made contact with him the shadows expanded consuming the upper half of Magni and the half of Compress who was next to him. The shadows collapsed on themselves showing the mutilated corpses of Magni and Compress. The league backed up as Izuku glared at them with toxic green eyes. Izuku turned his head to the unnerved Bakugo and tilted his head in gesture to scram before turning back to the remaining villains. Toga, I thought you said he wouldn't be a problem Shigi. Dabai, so much for being a hero. Shigaraki was silent as he grinded his teeth in anger since this monster was in his way once again. No he can't be stopped here. He still needs to destroy this society. He needs them to feel his pain. Shigaraki in the corner of his eye saw the hiding camera crew and smirked as he realized words last longer than actions. Shigaraki, aren't you supposed to be better than heroes? I distinctly remember you saying you would make our society better, make Japan a better place. Yet, you have probably killed more than me at this point and defiantly caused more damage than us. Why go through all this trouble to kill some low-class villains like little old me? Ezuku, you, are necessary sacrifices for the greater good. Well actually more like obstacles that are in the way of the greater good. No one will care once you're gone or even notice when I take care of you. You are insignificant pieces of shits that just want people to suffer just because your life wasn't like theirs. It will always just be trash even if you turn this entire country into a wasteland. You will still be the trash of society. Shigaraki growled as he tossed his mask hand aside showing his chappy anger-filled face. Shigaraki, you. You are what is wrong with this society. Hero society. Just because you have a powerful quirk you think you can do whatever you want. Push us weaker folk around and get us to do what you want. You probably had a sheltered life always getting what you want. A lot of friends, great food and probably a girlfriend. While well, I had to scour trash cans for food, so don't tell me you know what's best for society. Izuku, didn't you kill your whole family and that's why you had to scour for food? Don't lie I know all of your origins. You blame society for your shitty lives when you all choose this. Dabai could have returned to his family probably be the light for his father but he cowered away into villainy. Toga was sick in the head and never got help even when she knew she was sick in you. You are just a disgrace you blame heroes for your problems but your father hated heroes only because of your master and now you are just like your father. And stop acting like you care about this society you just want to destroy everything because you're just a boy that killed his whole family out of fear. Izuku raised his hands outward at the fuming villains. Izuku, it's not like it matters anymore but you blame heroes for everything but 95% problems in society are caused by people like you. I admit this society is a mess and needs to change but destroying everything just because your childhood was shitty is not the way. I mean look at you three alone, a psychopath that was told to stop being one, a jealous boy who tried to kill his little brother because his quirk was better and a traumatized child that blames heroes for his problems even though his hero-hating father just beat him because he wanted to become one. You blame society but refuse to take any blame yourself, you three were always going to be like this. Unwanted. Izuku disappeared in a flash as his fist went straight through Dabai's chest. Toga screamed in rage as she rushed Izuku who yanked his fist out and went to Toga. Toga tried to stab him but he grabbed her by the wrist breaking it causing her to drop the knife. Izuku grabbed the knife and started stabbing Toga repeatedly in the stomach with immense anger. After the 20th stab that he did in a second he stabbed her chest and dropped her body and started slowly walking towards the terrified Shigaraki. Before Izuku could finish him off a yellow blur hit Shigaraki in the back of the head knocking him out. Izuku looked at Gran Torino with a bored look as the old man glared at him with fury. It seems while he was monologuing AFO revealed Shigaraki was not a grandson so Gran Torino decided to save him. 
Izuku was impressed by the smart play by AFO since All Might and GT would do anything to save Nana's legacy. And AFO's future vessel. It's a shame Izuku didn't hold the same idea. Izuku couldn't to walk towards the downed Shigaraki but stopped again when he saw the Bakugo rescue squad also stand with GT to protect Shigaraki. Izuku sighed in annoyance as he knew he didn't have time for this. He could see the All Might fight was nearing its end. Izuku turned around and picked up the rebar again from twice his skull as he started to walk towards the All Might fight. He turned around though to get across one more message. Izuku, what's the point? I'm just going to kill him later. Izuku stood on top of some debris as he looked down at the two titans fighting until a loud shockwave occurred turning All Might into his true form. Izuku started stretching as he knew it was now or never. As AFO was about to start monologuing Izuku through the rebar in front of him causing him to shut up and turn towards Izuku. AFO started laughing as his eyes gazed upon the man that's been causing him so much trouble and costed years of preparation. AFO, it's you the person who's been a pain in my side for the last year. So why all the trouble for me? You want power, money, fame, revenge, maybe I killed your family. Izuku, you did but not yet at least. AFO, huh. The wind picked causing Izuku's hoodie to fall back revealing his green hair and eyes. Izuku responded with yanking off his mask showing his face. The world stood still at the reveal of the last pillar's face with some having very different reactions. AFO raised his non-existent eyebrow in confusion. All Might stood there completely frozen in shock. Deku looked like he saw a ghost as he stared at older looking him with the rescue Bakugo squad feeling the same. It was quiet in the dorms as the classes looked in shock at his face especially Aizawa and Yuraka. And Ko looked at the television with shock as she collapsed against the couch. Kirishima leaned towards Deku and whispered something. Kirishima, do you have an older brother? Midoriya. Deku, and no. I don't. The camera crew got a little closer as they wanted to get the best scoop and in order to do that they needed to hear what they are saying. AFO, and who might you be? Izuku, my name is Izuku Midoriya. The man that is going to kill you. AFO, you know I would believe you if it weren't for the fact that I can see the real Izuku Midoriya over there hiding with his friends. Next time you try to pretend to be someone at least pick someone close to your age. I mean look at you. You're probably in your early 20s while Izuku Midoriya is barely 15. So, I'm going to ask again who are you? Izuku, I already told you. Izuku appeared in front of AFO with their faces almost touching as Izuku glared into AFO's soul. Izuku, I'm the man that's going to kill you. Izuku punched AFO in the face launching him into a building causing it to collapse onto him. Izuku huffed as he tried his hardest to ignore the bright lights from the helicopter. Izuku heard shuffling behind him and turned around to see Skeel Might struggling to stand as he trembled at the sight of the bloody Izuku. A.M. H. How. Izuku, I'll tell you after I handle this bastard. Now get out of here, I don't want you dying on me again. All Might was going to argue but knew he was in no shape to help Izuku, so he nodded and walked away to the nearby safe zone. Izuku turned towards the moving rebel as AFO tossed it aside as he started to float in the air with visible anger. Izuku scoffed as he swatted away the red tendrils AFO sent at him with little effort. Izuku powered up to 20% and launched himself at FO as he made the abomination arm from his fight with All Might. Their fists met causing an explosion of power making a tornado around the battlefield and making a giant dust cloud as the tornado died down. The smoke cleared up instantly when Izuku waved his hand to the side. He wasn't going to let AFO hide. AFO was kneeling holding his right arm that was only a stub now as Izuku had completely vaporized it with his punch. Izuku kicked the downed AFO in the gut sending him flying into the sky but he didn't go far as Izuku wrapped him in black whip and slammed AFO back into the ground. Izuku slowly walked to the injured AFO with a glare as he truly wanted to enjoy this one last time. AFO tried to crawl away but couldn't get far as Izuku used black whip to start dragging him slowly towards him. AFO started to panic as Izuku dragged him towards him. AFO, wait. We can talk about this. I'll give you anything. Money, power, women, quirks, the whole world, you don't need to do this. Please have mercy. Izuku, you don't deserve mercy. Not now, not later, not anywhere you always deserve death. If you hadn't figured it out yet, I'm not from this time. In my time you destroyed everything, you won. I didn't give up though. UA didn't give up. The heroes didn't give up we kept fighting until you finally slipped up. I remember the joy I felt when I turned you into a red mist. The problem was after all the fighting I was the only one left. No one to come home to. No home to return to and no one to celebrate with, I was alone. Izuku put a foot on AFO's chest preventing him from moving and making sure he looks at the person that is going to kill him. Izuku, but I was given a second change. To give a world a chance to live in a peace. That is why I did what I did because I knew what those people would do if left alone. I'll do everything to make sure this world is perfect compared to mine. Even give my life. Now you are the last thing preventing that from happening. I hate to break it to you bastard but I'm not letting this chance slip by. AFO, wait. I'm your father. You have to show mercy. Izuku was instantly filled with rage and threw a punch at FO's face cracking the ground. Izuku straddled AFO as he let OFA increase in power making him glow with green electricity. Izuku, heh, you said the same thing last time and you know what I did. I turned you into a red paste onto the cement. 
Slam Izuku punched again cracking the ground. Izuku, you think I give you a shit who you are? Slam, Izuku, you think you earned an easy pass just because you're my father? Slam, Izuku, after what you did to Japan and UA. Slam, Izuku, to my friends. Slam, Izuku, to Koda. Izuku, to Ari. Slam, Izuku, to All Might. Slam, Izuku, to my predecessors. Slam, Izuku, to Mom. Slam, Izuku, to Achako. Slam, Izuku, the only thing you deserve is to go straight to hell you son of a bee. Several arms wrapped around Izuku dragging him off of the body of a F.O. Izuku was enraged and tossed the people off him as he looked who stopped. As he huffed and puffed in anger, he slowly calmed down as he saw the entire hero roster that came to the raid tried to pull him off even Skeel Might, Torino and his younger self. Izuku turned to AFO and finally calmed down as he saw AFO was long dead probably after the second punch his head just red paste on the cracked ground. Izuku quickly started to check his body confusing the crowds until he stopped and instantly went into another rage as he turned towards the police van that was loading up Shigaraki. He was about to charge it but he heard a whisper in his ear that made him immediately stop. Please rest, Izuku. Izuku, Achako. Izuku collapsed to his knees with a sigh as he felt all his exhaustion built. That's when he knew he was at his limit. He put his hands behind his head allowing the heroes to put anti-quirk cuffs on him and quickly restrain him and stuff him in a different van. As Izuku sat there in cuffs he let sleep take him as he felt his exhaustion take over his body. Then it was dark. With that see you in the next video bye bye.